Hi sewing friends, on behalf of UncommonThread.com, welcome to our monthly video and thank you so much for downloading it and taking the time to watch it. This month we are going to talk about Saki Paper Solvy Stabilizer. My name is Michelle Umloff and I'm a certified Saki teacher. This month, rather than teaching you a prod project, I'm going to teach you a technique, and this technique is paper piecing with Saki Paper Solvy Stabilizer. So let's jump right in and talk about the Saki Paper Solvy Stabilizer. This is a wash away stabilizer, but it's a little different because it has paper-like qualities. It's made of a polyvinyl alcohol and wood pulp, and this product is really safe to use because it's acid-free. You want to make sure that you do rinse this completely before you allow it to dry. So therefore, you just want to make sure you use a lot of water to completely wash it away. Paper Solvy Stabilizer is available on 8.5 by 11 printable size sheets that can be used in a photocopier, an inkjet printer, or bubble jet printers. This is the only size that the Paper Solvy is available in. You can use Paper Solvy for a variety of your sewing and crafting needs, but some of the things you might want to reach for it to do are things like the paper piecing, punched needle work, hand work, counted cross stitch, heirloom, and edge work. I'm sure you can come up with a other variety of uses for the Paper Solvy stabilizer depending on what you really like to sew. I'm also going to tell you about the Saki KK2000, which is a temporary spray adhesive. Now, when you first look at the KK2000, the first thing you're going to notice is its petite can. And I want to let you know that this little can has just as much spray adhesive in it as its big can competitors. The Saki KK2000 has been engineered to have a precise spray pattern and it's dispersed with a low pressure propellant. I know that's a lot of technical information, but Saki KK2000 is actually heavier than air. When you combine all these facts about the KK2000, you'll notice that you use less spray and that it goes exactly where you want it. Saki KK2000 is non-toxic, it's colorless, and I say it's virtually odorless because it's good for people with sensitivities, but yet some people are just so, so sensitive to um, sprays that it could um, bother them a little bit. So it's always a good idea when you're around someone like that to use it in an open area or a well-ventilated area. It's non-flammable and it is environmentally friendly. Now when I use Saki KK2000, I'm still kind of old school and I do go away from my sewing machine and my work area to do this. Um, Either I go outside or I'm lucky enough to have a bathroom um, in my sewing room. So I go in the sewing into the bathroom and use the Saki KK2000. Saki KK2000 is absorbed by the fibers right away. And it's um, well absorbed within 24 to 36 hours. But it starts to disappear after two to five days. And we give you such a range like that. It depends on the climate in which you live. However, if you want the Saki KK2000 to disappear much faster than that, all you have to do is apply the heat of a warm iron and it's gone. The one thing I want to caution you about Saki KK2000 is do not attempt to wash it away. That's not going to work and it's really just going to cause a real sticky mess. If you find yourself in such a bind, consider using some rubbing alcohol to save you. Saki KK2000 has a a lot of uses for it in your sewing and your crafting needs. You'll find that it's repositionable so you can move it around as many times as you need and it's often a handy product to use in place of pins. If you enjoy in doing um, 
machine embroidery, you're going to find that using KK2000 in combination with your stabilizers will allow you to hoop the unhoopable. So let's move on to our paper piecing project. We need some supplies, don't we? So we're going to work with some Salky products, specifically the Paper Salvi Stabilizer, the KK2000, Polylite Thread, and the Cotton Blendables Thread. Go to UncommonThread.com and you can look at a previous video that has more information about those types of threads. You'll also need some needles, the Schmetz needle, either a 1070 or an 1175 needle, and you'll also need a 1490 top stitch needle. You'll want to use a paper piecing template, and I'll tell you where I got mine. You'll need your home printer, fabric scraps, and I highly recommend this handy ruler. It's called Add a Quarter. You'll need a rotary cutter and mat, as well as an iron. So you can visit UncommonThread.com and you will save 20% off retail prices every single day when you shop at Uncommon Threads. And I can't tell you enough how great of a deal that really is. Most um, independent stores cannot offer that kind of discount, so it really pays to shop online at UncommonThread.com. So let's move on and get started with our project. You're going to print out your paper piecing templates directly onto the Salky Paper Salvi Stabilizer. And both sides are just the same. It doesn't matter. Just load up your printer with the sheets of um, paper Salvi and you're just going to print them as usual. Now I got my template. I've discovered it on quiltinspiration.blogspot.com and what I did was I searched, um, I believe my terms were leaves and free paper piecing template or something like that and I came across Quilt Inspiration. And then Quilt Inspiration led me to this template that was available at quiltmaker.com. And when you uh, access this template called Falling Leaves, they'll give you um, instructions on where you can make an actual full-size quilt using this template, but you have to get the Quilt Maker magazine for that, and it's a, they'll tell you what issue it is. So I just want to point out a couple of features about the template itself. First, you're going to notice that I drew a dotted diagonal line. And if you are new to paper piecing, even if you're rusty, perhaps even if you think you're an expert, what you want to do is cut this um, template kind of like in the middle of these two pieces. This template is actually two pieces that we later sew together, so it's two halves to make the whole leaf. Then you're going to notice around each section of, or each um, half of the pattern, there's a, a seam allowance. Now just keep that in mind when you're using your add a quarter ruler. That's the only thing I wanted to point out about that. And if you use the add a quarter ruler, then you can fold along that inner line. And I just want you to notice if you're new to paper piecing that each of these sections are numbered. So the one half has uh, numbers one through seven and the second one has one through eight. And that's the order in which you're going to apply your pieces of fabric. First thing you're going to do is identify section one and it tells us that this is part of our leaf you're going to spray the wrong side of your fabric with the Saki KK2000. Then you're going to place that sprayed side onto the wrong side of the template. And then you can use a light source such as a light box or a brightly lit window just to look and make sure that your fabric completely covers that section. Next, you're going to identify section two, and again, this is our leaf. But before we get into that, I want to go over a few points with you. It's kind of jumping ahead, but I think I need to bring it up at this point. When you 
position this next piece of fabric. It's going to be right on top of your first piece of fabric and it's going to have the right sides together. Okay, that makes sense. It makes sense because when you sew something together, you always place right sides together and sew your seam, right? Okay. So keep in mind that you're going to be sewing along that dotted line. That separates sections one and two. I have number one in gray, and that means that little area above the dotted line. Then I have the number two in black and that's the area below the dotted line. That's where this orange piece of fabric is eventually going to be folded over to. So I just wanted to make that clear so that you can follow me. So then after you've sewn it, you're going to flip that top piece of fabric over so that it covers its section. So in this case, it's going to be covering that number two area that I showed you just a moment ago. Now the very important things that you have to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that your fabric is at least a half an inch or larger on all sides of its section. And it's okay to make it even a little bit larger. As you can see here, I've used scrap pieces of fabric and some of them are insanely large for the area I need to cover. But I did that so that I don't have any surprises. It gets a little confusing when you start to fold this stuff over, especially when you're dealing with angles and sometimes things don't quite look how you anticipate they will once you sew that line. But I just wanted to forewarn you about that. So actually on all four sides of our section we need to leave enough fabric so that we have a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay I know I probably blew you away so let's start all over. We're going to work with section two and that is our leaf. This time we're going to spray the right side of the fabric with the KK2000 and we're going to place that sprayed side directly on top of our first piece of fabric. Okay, And you can verify that with your light source again. All right, now we're ready to go over to our sewing machine. So you want to set up your sewing machine for a straight stitch and you want a relatively short stitch about 1.5 to 2 and your feed dogs are raised. You can use an all-purpose presser foot or you can use an open toe applique foot to do this but you need to follow that line. We're going to use the Saucy Poly Light thread. It's a wonderful thread to use uh, for piecing projects like this together and it's a 60 weight thread so that it's going to eliminate any excess bulk. So therefore you might find that you need to lower your tension ever so slightly. When working with the poly light thread you want to use a 1070 or an 1175 needle. So now we're at our sewing machine and we're going to sew with the template with the right side up so the fabric is underneath this paper solvy and we're going to sew along the line that separates section one from section two. Now it's recommended that you sew one to two stitches before the actual line and stop about one to two inches afterwards. I'm kind of like a stickler in that I like to do the back stitching um, when I start and when I end because I don't want this to come apart after I've put all this work into it so I, I highly recommend that. After you've sewn it you want to fold the paper solvy onto itself and what this does is it's going to expose the excess fabrics or the excess, excess seam allowance. Now when you work with the add a quarter ruler, this ruler is so cool and it is so handy. It's not a flat ruler, but rather it has like a little lip. And when you place that lip up against the fold of the paper, it's actually a quarter inch wide. So that's why it's at a quarter, at a quarter inch. And then you're just going to use your rotary cutter and mat to cut off that excess fabric and you have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Very, very cool. 
Then you're going to go to your pressing station and you're going to set the seam with a warm iron. And if you're not familiar with that term of setting a seam, what that basically means is your fabrics are going to still be right side together and before you open them up, you're going to press them with a warm iron and it's going to set the seam and then the iron is also going to dissipate the Saki KK2000. So that's a, a good thing to do. You're going to fold the fabric over and now it's going to cover its section and that's the picture that you see here and you're going to press that seam open. So let's just review that. I know that was a lot of information but let's just go over it one more time. For the next section you're going to identify it and it's going to be section 3. You're going to spray the right side of the fabric with the KK2000. Then you're going to place that sprayed side on the previous piece of fabric that you just ironed into place. It's over section two. And then you'll find after you do this several times, maybe by the second time you're um, making your second block, that you're getting more comfortable with it. And you'll find some other things that you can do, such as lining up your raw edges. Just wanted to throw that out there, um, just in case perhaps you're more experienced in doing paper piecing. But you want to make sure you keep all those points in mind that I mentioned earlier about checking the position of your uh, piece of fabric, ensuring that it's large enough, at least a half an inch larger on all four sides, etc. And by the way, you can go to UncommonThread.com and download a printout of this presentation so you don't have to scribble, write notes, or watch this over and over. You can just download a PDF. Now you'll have the template at your sewing machine with the right sides up and you're going to sew along that line that separates section 2 and 3, starting just a stitch or two before and after that line. You're going to fold the Saki paper solvey back onto itself and use the add a quarter ruler to cut off your excess fabric at a quarter of an inch. And then you're going to set the seam and it also dissipates the Saki KK2000. Then you're going to fold that piece of fabric over its appropriate section and give it a nice press again. So I want to point out that the next section is number four and you'll notice here in the picture that number four also extends an, uh, up to part of leaf or section two. So you're going to have to sew from where I have the arrow at two all the way down to the end of that section where four and three meet. So you need to sew that entire section. So paper piecing, piecing is actually easy. It just takes some time and some practice. So be patient with yourself. Allow yourself time to learn this new technique. Your mind is going to feel like it's tied up like a pretzel. And it's, but the good news is you're doing it right. I know it might feel uncomfortable and it seems crazy, but that you're doing it perfectly right. Keep a seam ripper handy and if you have to remove any stitches because you're working with the paper solvey stabilizer, it'll rip if you try to take more than one stitch out at a time. So just take each individual stitch out. There are not too many stitches in these pieces and you will get better with time. It just takes practice. So after you've completed piecing together both halves of your leaf, you want to cut along the outer line for your seam allowance. So as you can see here, I've trimmed away all that excess information and I've left my outer seam allowance um, in place. Then you're just going to pin the right sides together and you're going to sew. Again, the, everything is the same here, except I would recommend using a quarter inch foot if you have one. And we're still going to continue sewing with the Saki Poly Light Thread. You're going to place this underneath your sewing machine and you're going to sew along that inner line or you can use the guide on your 
quarter inch presser foot. Set the seam when you're finished with a warm iron and then you're going to press the seam allowance to one side. Then you can embellish with your built-in decorative stitches and using any color from the Saucy Cotton Blendables collection. And it just enhances your paper piecing and it looks really, really nice when you add some decorative stitches to it. When it's time to remove the Paper Solvy Stabilizer, you want to be sure to support your stitches and gently tear away the excess Paper Solvy. If needed, you could just maybe use a dampened Q-tip to help loosen up any small bits of Paper Solvy that is still intact. But remember, the key thing is that this Paper Solvy must be completely removed before you allow it to dry. And I found it that was easier to remove all of the outside pieces of stabilizer. So the, the, the black, whatever, stabilizer was on top of that. It was really easy to pull away because ha having sewn over those areas perforated the paper solving and it teared away really easy. It was a little bit more difficult to actually uh, remove the stabilizer that was within the leaf itself. So what you just want to do is fill a bucket up with warm water, rinse and soak it several times until it is completely gone. This water is now safe to use outside. You can water your plants with it, etc. And if you're ever using water-soluble stabilizer, be kind of cautious about putting it down the drain unless it's like very, very diluted because it is a really, it could, if you don't use enough water, it could be a really thick consistency. So there you have paper piecing with Saucy Paper Solvy. My name is Michelle Umloff and you can visit my website at www.sosimplified.com. I have a podcast that is available on iTunes and you can follow me there or look me up under Facebook under So Simplified. If you visit my website, you'll find that I teach online sewing classes and you can receive the Not Your Grandma's Bowl class for free just for becoming one of my sewing friends. We here at UncommonThread.com thank you very much for your time and we hope you learned something about the variety of Saucy stabilizers and threads that were used in this project. Remember you do receive not 15% off retail but 20% off retail every single day when you shop at UncommonThread.com. And remember to give us a like on Facebook. Do a search of UncommonThread.com and you'll find us there and you can keep up with all the latest news from UncommonThread.com.